Hey there, camels. Uh, today, I want to start a little series about locals. Um, local, the local mode, which is sort of a, something that's going to appear in types, is, um, is an idea that's been developed in the Jane Street branch of the OCaml compiler. Um, right? This is where Jane Street experiments with, with new ideas um, uh, and to refine them and then in the, um, with the goal and hopes of, of upstreaming this into the main, uh, main development of OCaml. Uh, but right now, these local, this local mode is available in the Jane Street compiler, and it's something that we can play around with and, and start to learn about. So um, it, what, what's going to happen here is we're going we're gonna to understand piece by piece the different aspects that local introduces into the type system. And then the payoff at the end is we're going to get some really wonderful allocation behavior that allows us to make some uh, latency sensitive code run faster. So that's that's the sort of the end goal. But we're going to get there piece by piece because I think starting out by just looking at how this affects our types is a better way of understanding this than jumping straight to its allocation behavior. Um, so before we get any further, let me just show what compiler I'm using. So this is, um, this uh, I'm in 4.14.1, but the, the Jane Street version of it, um, there's other ways, other, other material out there that can show you how to get this onto your machine. Um, but for right now, let's, let's dive in and see how we can actually do stuff with these local, uh, with this local mode. I don't want to call them local types. It's easy to do that, um, but it's not exactly, the local is not exactly the same thing as a type. So I don't want to, I don't want to call it a local type. Um, so let's, let's actually start looking at an example. And, and you're going to see that every time I have an example here, I'm going to write out a full uh, type annotation on all of my let bindings. Uh, this works, uh, local stuff works fine with inference, but we're going to get better error messages and more compact examples if I write out the, the type signatures. So we're going to start out with something very simple, right? This should work. Um, and indeed, when I compile this, we see that it does. That's fine. Um, what I want to do now is I want to start adding the local mode to this, um, this declaration here. So what that means is I can say I can put this local annotation on an argument to a function, and that says that that, that, uh, that parameter of that function does not escape. Um, and we're going to refine this definition a little bit as we work. But a local parameter does not escape the function. So here I've written one. And if I try to compile this, then this value escapes its region, right? We get an error here because I said this local is a promise that it does not escape the function. And yet I'm returning it. That's one way of escaping. Um, and that, that's problematic. So if we want to see this a slightly more drawn out example, now I can take two arguments. So I have fun x, y. Here, I'm going to get an error. This value escapes its region. Let's say more about regions in just a moment. If I change this to y, though, and I compile, now everything is just fine. I have not made any promise at all about the second parameter to my f, only the first. So only x matters here uh, if I return x. Let's try to understand this error slightly better. Um, so here, it says that this value escapes its region. And that's because a region is a certain area of code. Every function defines a region. It turns out there's actually an exception to that rule that we'll get to in a later video. Um, but we can, we can pretend for now that every function defines a region. And so that means that this x that comes into this function, it can't then escape the function. So one way it might escape is by returning. As we see, that's a problem. Another way that it might escape is, let's make this not polymorphic. Um, and here, maybe I have, um, oh, uh, let um, box is a string ref, and that can start out with whatever, I don't really care. Um, and another way that something can escape is if I store it somewhere. So maybe I say box colon equals x, and then I actually return y here, but if I store, of trying to store the value x in that reference there, that's escaping the region. And so this local here is a promise to callers of my f that whatever I pass in never escapes. Why is that useful, one might wonder. Um, so one way that it might be useful is let's say we have uh, a type t that has a mutable field, um, and then maybe some others. But for right now, it's just going to have this one mutable field. 
And now, um, let's see. Doesn't really matter what the body of the function is in this in this example here. So this should compile. Yes, this compiles. Um, so what this is saying is now, if I'm writing some g, which calls f on t1 and t2, and then later I set I say t1 dot s gets some new string. Well, I might wonder, hmm, does this writing to t1, does this affect anything that happens in f at all, right? If f somehow held on to this value t1, if it stored it and, or cached it in some way, then maybe changing t1 later somehow affects the action of f. By knowing, however, that this first argument of f is local, I know that that can't happen. So this local gives me extra reasoning properties about my code. It, it allows me to know that after this f is done, it has no relationship whatsoever to t1, and I can feel free to mutate aspects of t1 without affecting the behavior of f or anything returned by f. Um, so that's, that's a nice little reasoning principle. Uh, the other aspect of this that can be good is in, in callback functions. So let's get rid of this code down here. Um, actually, we're going to get rid of, I think, everything. Um, and so we might have a function, something like let with file, and maybe it takes in a file name here, and then it has a callback function. Um, and so this local callback function gets a file handle, and it can return any old type. But because this is local, it means that in my definition of, um, of with file, after my local, okay, fun file name and then f, after f get, is done running, after my callback is done running, I know that f can't store this handle anywhere, and so it must always be safe to close the file. Right, this kind of interface to a um, into a system that opens and closes files is fairly common. We can do this, and but right now we just have to trust that the callback doesn't somehow store the handle somewhere. Well, with locals, now we can be sure that it doesn't store it anywhere. Um, so that's really what local does. One thing that 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 I that's implied by everything that I've said here is I say a local parameter does not escape its region. So that restricts what the function can do, but any old argument can be passed into a local um, a local parameter. So going back to my original f here, if I have something like this, then at any usage side of f, I can pass whatever I want. I can pass local things, I can pass global things. It doesn't matter. All this local is is a restriction on the implementation of f, and therefore a promise to all callers of f. Right? It restricts the implementation of f that I can't return x, it can't store x anywhere. And that means, because of that restriction, it's a promise to all callers that whatever we pass in as the first argument to f is always going to be, well, it is never going to be uh, stored anywhere. Um, and, and that's what local arguments do. So there's, this is the beginning of, of sort of an exploration. There's more to come, but I hope that this has been interesting and educational for you. Thanks for watching.